How you doing? Hi guys, it's Ali. <laughs> Welcome to another Time Travel Tuesday, where we combine tingles with nostalgia, as decided by you. So again, tons of votes on last week's Time Travel Tuesday. Thank you guys so much. So I'll tell you the top five votes uh, that I received. So coming in at number five, we had Dragon Ball Z. At number four, Full House. Number three was Bob Ross. Number two, Star Wars. And number one was, of course, the show Friends. So I have got for you a special tribute to the show. Don't be fooled by the incredible realism of this cup. This is actually not a true Central Perk cup. This is a white coffee cup that I made into a Central Perk cup with a piece of paper with the Central Perk logo printed out and taped onto the cup. It's a sham. But I wanted to have something to show you because there wasn't a lot in the way of physical representation of the show. Anyway, this is what I got. And um, instead of a big giant bowl cup of coffee, I actually have some herbal tea because it's nighttime and I don't want to be cracked out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my cup and drink my tea a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you about the show Friends. But before I do that, I want to say something real quick. As a lot of you may have noticed, the 90s kids have been very much dominating Time Travel Tuesdays. And I love it, and I couldn't be happier with it. I myself am a 90s kid, so my own personal bias says, yeah. But at the same time, I want to give people from other decades, people who grew up in other decades, a chance to have their nostalgia featured uh, in Time Travel Tuesdays also. So I mentioned a couple weeks back that I would sometimes be holding a themed vote for Time Travel Tuesday. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that into play for this week. So on this video, I want you guys to comment and vote for your favorite piece of 80s nostalgia. And it can be anything, nothing specific, just has to be from the 80s. So 80s kids, now is your chance to shine, I guess. Cool. So, yeah, don't forget to vote for your favorite piece of 80s nostalgia. And that's what I'll feature next week. I'm really looking forward to it. Because it'll be something that, probably something that I'm not super familiar with. I'm going to tell you just about everything I know about this show, which incidentally is one of my favorite shows ever. Central Perk. For those of you who don't know what you're looking at right now, is this backwards? I think it might be. Oh well. Maybe it's not. For those of you who are not familiar with the significance of Central Perk, uh, Central Perk is a uh, coffee shop that all of the friends in the TV show um, gather at pretty much every day. And it's just a major, major setting of the show. Okay, here we go. So, Friends is a sitcom, an American sitcom, that was created by David Crane and Marta Kaufman. The 
show aired for 10 years. Very long-running show. Uh, between the years of 1994 and 2004. I'll give you, I guess, a brief synopsis of the show for those of you who are not super familiar with it or who haven't watched it in many years. Although you have no excuse if you're a fan and you haven't watched the show because it comes on, I think, TBS and Nick at Night. So it's out there. Uh, okay, so brief, brief synopsis. The show centers around six young adults, probably in their late 20s, I think definitely in their late 20s, who all live in Manhattan, I believe, New York City, and just sort of centers around their lives and their careers and relationships with one another and with other people and if anyone has watched the show like I've watched the show they'll know that it's a show about friends but more than that it's just a show about family so there's your synopsis I guess so the stars of the show Jennifer Aniston, who plays Rachel, David Schwimmer, who plays Ross, Courtney Cox, who plays Monica, Matthew Perry as Chandler, Lisa Kudrow as Phoebe, and Matt LeBlanc as Joey. I think that um, most people who are big fans of the show have at, at least one point in their lives compared themselves with at least one of the characters of Friends. I personally think that I'm sort of a hybrid mix of Monica, Phoebe, with a pretty decent amount of Chandler thrown in. So, you should tell me who, who you are, which friend you are, or friends. Anyway, um, so, when the show was being developed and conceptualized and written, when the pilot was being written, and all through the production up until it actually aired. It went through a lot of name changes. And I think some of the... Uh, some of the titles of the show are pretty great. I think one of the first titles was called... or was, um, Insomnia Cafe. And I like that because it reminds me of Central Perk. I wonder if Insomnia Cafe was meant to be like the name of the coffee shop where they all gathered. Uh, another name was Oh, Friends Like Us. I think that one almost made it through. Uh, another name was Six of One. And then there was Across the Hall. Which is appropriate since they all lived across the hall from each other for the most part. Except for Ross and Phoebe. Didn't really. Well, Phoebe did sometimes. Anyway. So, finally it just became friends. So, um, Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston, who play Monica and Rachel, uh, respectively, were originally going to be cast as uh, the opposite. So, Courtney Cox was originally going to be cast as Rachel. Jennifer Aniston was originally going to be cast as uh, Monica. Right? Yeah, Monica. Um, 
but basically what happened was um, Courtney Cox wanted to be Monica and she thought she would do better as Monica and Jennifer Aniston thought the same about Rachel so they just kind of said no I think I think I'll be Monica and I think I'll be Rachel and they said okay personally I cannot imagine Jennifer Aniston as Monica or Courtney Cox as Rachel. That's, that's that's impossible to fathom. This is chamomile tea. Um, so as I said, the show is set in New York City. You may be interested to know that the show was never never once in all of its 10 years ever shot in New York City. It was shot primarily at the Warner Brothers Studios in California. And they did some on-location shoots, um, or maybe just one, uh, the one in London. I think there was an episode that was set in Vegas, but was still shot in L.A. I think that's right. Um, so, I, Matt LeBlanc, who plays Joey, it took him a really long time to sort of get the part, he had to go through a lot of auditions. And uh, the creators of the show, David Crane and Marta Kaufman, did not want him to play Joey. And they turned, they said no. But the network pretty much said, no, you have to, we have to cast him. So deal with it. So they dealt with it. I'm not sure who they wanted instead, but I don't think they could have gotten a better Joey. He was great. So, uh, Warner Brothers. Wanted to pay the cast members. Uh, pay them all differently. I guess maybe just based on, I'm not sure, maybe how famous they were. And if they wanted, they preferred to have individual deals with each actor. But the actors instead chose to have um, uh, collective salaries. And for a couple of cast members, that meant that they actually had to take pay cuts and get paid less than they would have. But they went for it anyway. Um, Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer were the ones who had to take pay cuts in order to do that. But it's what they wanted to do. Um, they actually were all very, very close friends in real life. They were kind of BFFs off screen. So maybe, maybe that's why they didn't, no one wanted to make more than anyone else. And also, um, beginning with, I believe, the fifth season, uh, the cast members all received syndicated royalties, meaning they got paid when the show would rerun. And that was unique because at that point, the only um, stars of, of TV shows like that who made um, syndication royalties were the people who had ownership rights to the show itself. So um, Jerry Seinfeld, for instance, 
he had ownership rights to his show Seinfeld and Bill Cosby to the Cosby show so that was quite unique at the time so yeah they were all very close friends and especially uh, Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston is actually the godmother now of Courtney Cox's daughter, Coco. something new. I did not know this. David Schwimmer, the actor who played Ross, directed a few episodes of the show. I think he directed maybe like 10 or 11 full episodes. So as many of you probably know, Bruce Willis appeared for a couple of episodes of Friends. And he played the father of a girl that um, Ross was dating at the time. He's a very kind of gruff and intimidating kind of guy. Now he, around this time, he and Matthew Perry, who played Chandler, were working on the whole nine yards together. And I, I believe they're pretty close friends. They were working on the whole nine yards, and they made a bet. And the bet was that Matthew Perry thought that the whole nine yards would be number one in the box office when it came out. And Bruce Willis disagreed, I guess. And the bet was that if Matthew Perry was right, Bruce Willis had to do his uh, Friends episodes for free. So, Matthew Perry was right. Whole Nine Yards was number one in the box office when it came out, I guess. I think so. And so, Bruce Willis, well, he couldn't do his episodes for free. I think he had to get paid. So, in order for it to for him to honor the bet, since he lost, he donated the money he earned from friends to charity. And unfortunately, I just have no idea which charity at all. So, yeah, he pretty much did do it for free. you watch this video, or if you fall asleep then tomorrow sometime when you're awake, I want you to search on YouTube for, oh yeah, search for The One After Vegas opening credits, and I'll tell you why. There is an episode of Friends called The One After Vegas. Around this time, can't hold this properly, whatever. Around this time, Courtney Cox married uh, David Arquette and became Courtney Cox Arquette. The episode, The One After Vegas, I believe is the first episode of Friends featuring. Courtney Cox Arquette's new name in the opening credits. So I want you to watch that video because they snuck in something really funny into the opening credits. If you watch closely, you'll see that every single cast member that is credited in the opening, in the intro, 
also bears the last name Arquette. So first you see Courtney Cox Arquette, and then I believe you see Jennifer Aniston Arquette. David Schwimmer, Arquette, etc. It's really funny. And that, uh, incidentally, also is the only episode of Friends in which uh, Jennifer Aniston is not the first person credited in the uh, opening credits. In every other episode, she is the first one credited. So many of you may remember Phoebe, the character Phoebe's um, evil twin sister, Ursula. Ursula Buffet. Buffet. What you may not know is that Ursula is actually a character from a show that was on around the same time. Mad about you. Ursula was played by Lisa Kudrow, also. And she, in Mad About You, was just kind of a sort of rude, flaky waitress at a restaurant. Because Lisa Kudrow was basically doing two shows at once, there needed to be, I guess NBC needed there to be an explanation as to, you know, why she was, why she was, um, on both shows. So, that's where Phoebe's evil twin sister Ursula came from. She actually was a character already on another show so they sort of created a crossover. <laughs> and there's an episode of Friends where um, Helen Hunt, who's one of the main characters of uh, Mad About You, she and someone else, maybe a friend of hers, I'm not sure, I can't remember, um, she walks into, I believe, Central Perk, and she sees Phoebe and mistakes her for Ursula. And she's playing her, in the episode of Friends that she appears, she is playing her character from Mad About You. But she's never named. Because that would have probably been a violation of some kind. I bet you didn't know that. To, uh, Matt LeBlanc, the actor who plays Joey. Um, he, did, he did some acting work before Friends. He did some commercials. I think he was most famous for a Heinz ketchup commercial, which you can also find on YouTube, and I watched it, and it's very funny. Um, he even though he made some decent money from his previous acting jobs, he must not have been super wise with it because when he was cast as Joey on Friends, he apparently had only $11 to his name. He was down to his last, basically his last dime. And then basically became a millionaire right after that. So, um, the, each episode is about 22 minutes long, but there were 
constant rewrites of the script going on all the time, all throughout production. Always, pretty much. And because of that, shooting that 22 minute long episode typically took about six hours for each episode. Which, actually, is about twice as long as it takes to shoot a normal sitcom episode. And um, there was a, a live studio audience and they, I guess, sat there for six hours while they made script changes and took a million takes. And I believe there was a, a hired comedian there to keep them all sort of entertained. Speaking of the studio audience, um, Tom Selleck, who's a very famous actor, had a recurring role on the show for a while as Richard, uh, Monica's boyfriend, for a while. And um, he was, I guess, a very well-known and well-liked actor at the time, because every time he made an entrance, the audience would cheer so loudly that his entrances actually couldn't ever be used and they had to do retakes um, without an audience present so that he could so that he could actually have an entrance without a screaming crowd and that happened pretty much every time he came out series finale, the big ending of the show. Uh, if you watched it, as you know, it's very, very emotional. Very touching, of course. It had, if I'm not mistaken, 52.5 million viewers tuned in. I was one of them. So yeah, 52.5 million viewers, and that made it the fourth most watched series finale in TV history. And it comes in fourth behind um, MASH, Cheers, and Seinfeld. And that year, just that year, it was the second most watched TV episode of the whole year. And it came in only behind the Super Bowl. interesting things that I learned about um, the show isn't actually even totally about the show, but it relates. So, as a lot of you probably are aware, and maybe you're not, but I'm sure many of you are, uh, Matthew Perry, who played Chandler, throughout the show, uh, struggled with uh, an addiction to opiates, painkillers, alcohol. Um, had a couple of stints in rehab, I believe. And just had a pretty hard time, and you can actually see it as you're watching the show. It's very interesting to watch over time, because you can see his weight sort of going up and down. Sometimes he looks kind of really plump and healthy, and other times he looks very thin and kind of sick and tired. So, he 
He's having a tough time. A lot of people may already know that. But what you may not know is that he, well, he had this beautiful Malibu home that overlooked the Pacific Ocean. And it's just an incredible, incredible house. <laughs> it's amazing. And he recently converted his home, that house of his, into a uh, sober sober living house for men who are sort of struggling to get back on their feet and he apparently devotes quite a bit of his time to um, just helping these men who are recovering from addiction now he has his own addiction counselor named Earl Hightower, I believe. I think it's Earl Hightower. And they work together to open up this sober house inside of what was his home. And he is very, very dedicated to helping these men who have kind of been in the same who are in the same boat that he has been in and he's also um, a very strong advocate for um, well, for treatment instead of jail time for non-violent um, substance abusers, I guess. So, a, basically a program that allows them to get treatment instead of have to serve jail time if they are um, struggling with uh, substance abuse problems. Uh, only non-violent crimes, though. really liked learning about that because for one, it just gives me a new level of respect for him. I've always liked Matthew Perry and I love Chandler, but this kind of makes it all the better. So it makes me kind of respect him a little bit more, but also um, sort of close to home for me because I've, you know, I've seen addiction in my family and it's it's a pretty nasty disease so I really like that um, Matthew Perry is sort of dedicating his time and his money his resources even to helping these people get back on their feet people who want the help I like it a lot. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Time Travel Tuesday. And I hope you learned some new interesting things about friends. Don't forget to leave your vote or your favorite 80s nostalgia in the comments below. And I'll be seeing you guys again very soon. But until then, sweet dreams, time travel.